Hey friends, welcome back to Lydia's Plate. Today I am going to attempt canning fish. I have never done this before and I was apprehensive as how it was going to go. Things were a lot different than canning other items and or I should say the rules or instructions were quite different from canning vegetables. So I was very curious to see how this was going to go. My fish here were still quite frozen, but later on when I canned all the rest of them, I did cut them about the size of what I cut that first piece. And after I did these fish, I ended up cutting up all the rest of them. My, my workstation was behind me there beside the coffee maker, between the coffee maker and the sink because being close to the sink was so handy for washing the fish all the time after getting the tags off, but it's easier to film here from the island. I also didn't get near as many fish into these first three jars as I did later on. Once the fish were thawed and I could cut them into bigger pieces, I could really fill up these jars. So here you can see I'm not even getting two fillets or one full fish into a jar. Later on, I got anywhere from two and a half to three fillets in each jar once they were thawed and I could really pack them in. That being said, I packed a lot of fish into the later jars, so much so that it easily fed our family for two to three meals. It was a lot of fish in those jars. So the next time I do this, when the fish are thawed and I'm cutting them into about three inch long pieces. I will only fill the jars about three quarter full, kind of like how these cheese whiz jars are now. I didn't cram the tops full. Other than that, it all went very well. I do not actually have a canning pot, and so I used the pots that I have, one being on the stove there and the other one that has the spoon over top of it that I always make more kombucha in. So those are the two pots that I used for canning all the jars of fish in. I ended up getting 17 jars. One we ate within a day or two because I wanted to know how it had turned out before I continued. And then the other one we ate a week or two later because Mark hadn't tasted from that first jar and so we came home very late right around six o'clock and it was so simple to just have fish sandwiches and pickles and cheese it was such a quick easy supper I mean that's ready in like 10 minutes and it was just such a simple meal I didn't have to think a lot about it I didn't have to run the oven or anything it was just so simple it'll be a great summer meal also the next day when you see us eating some of this fish later on in the video our hydro had been out and I mean thank you so much to all the hydro workers they had called earlier in the week and warned us that the hydro would be out for two hours but it ended up being out quite a bit longer it ended up being out from like 9 40 till 2 and so it was so convenient and handy to have a fireplace. We were down to coals and my bread wasn't all the way thawed so I took tongs and I was warming up slices of bread over those coals. It was so warm they were getting kind of toasty. It was very nice and just a totally different flavor than a toaster and, and so it was also so handy to have this fish for that kind of a moment because what do you do when you have no hydro and you need to make food? So that was super convenient as well. I'm so glad that I decided to turn all the fish in our freezer into canned fish. This recipe was so simple as well and I'll make sure I add it in the description box, but it was two tablespoons of tomato juice, tomato soup, or ketchup, your choice. I went with tomato juice because that was something that I had made quite a few jars of in fall and I knew it was something that I would likely have more left over compared to say my tomato soup. I didn't want to be 
without the tomato soup because I'd ended up using it for the fish. I would have preferred to use the juice, which I did. Um, and also, I haven't experimented with making my own ketchup yet, and so I didn't want to be using ketchup for this because that's something that I buy. So two tablespoons of tomato juice, two tablespoons of oil, I was using sunflower oil, I don't know if it matters, the recipe just says oil, two tablespoons of vinegar, and it says one large teaspoon of salt. So I just took my teaspoon and made sure it was heaping every time, and the fish all tastes great. So here we go, my lids have been softening up. I've boiled them for about five minutes and now I'm sealing them as tight as I can and they're gonna go into these pots to can. These jars do look quite empty, but later on those jars that I filled up super, super full, they were so full that those few tablespoons of liquid barely fit. I was putting my scraper in there and trying to press on the fish along the sides to kind of make a bit of a pocket for the juice to run down there. But yeah, those jars later on were super, super full. Now, here with this pot, I had put the water in first. I have never actually canned in pots like this. I've always done all my canning as steam canning in the oven, so this was also a first for me. I wasn't just canning fish for the first time, I was just learning even how to can in a pot for the first time. In the future, when I can the rest of the jars, I would put the jars into the pots first and then add water because if I had too much water then my jars were floating in the pots and that was not good. So this is how we eat our fish. I don't know if there are other ways to eat it, but I just mash it up, add some Miraquip, and it's done. It's that simple, super easy. I am very happy with the results from this. I have heard of other recipes with spices and all kinds that go into the jars during the canning process, and so I may try those in the future, I don't know. We're also very happy with this one, so I don't know if I will change anything. The kids came to sample here a bit first because I really just wanted to know how this tasted, if it tasted, you know, like the store-bought or better than the store-bought. I just, I really needed to know. And we did not find any bones. Most of these fish were jack. There were a couple walleye and there was even for sure one or two walleye that were quite freezer burnt and we have not been able to taste that yet. So I have been very, very happy with this experiment. everyone thanks so much for watching so we tried this fish for lunch and it was delicious sorry for the darker video our hydro has been out it was supposed to be back on about an hour ago it's not back on yet and so the bread was only taken out an hour ago it wasn't quite fully thawed and so I just took barbecue tongs and held it over the coals in the fireplace and it toasted up nicely warmed up thawed and the kids said that this fish was a huge hit. This jar had not sealed and it was somewhat difficult to keep the pot at just a low boil or, or a slower cooking because the jars continually were knocking together. But the end result is that everybody was happy with it. They said it was amazing. 
I'm curious to see if this fish will make me burp all day. I don't enjoy it when that happens with fish and other home canned fish that I've had does not do that. Only the store-bought stuff. So I'm super excited for this. The other two jars sealed. I will have to wipe them down as they are sticky from whatever went over. I was so skeptical because of how little liquid I needed to add into the jars, but hey, it worked. It's a success. Kids are all happy. This is all that was left, so maybe enough for one more. All I did was add some Miracle Whip to it, and for me, there's no science or measuring to that. It's just once we find it moist enough for our taste. I would guess for that jar of fish, I added about a cup of Miracle Whip. And that was all I added, no salt, no pepper, no seasonings. I mean, probably could, it would probably taste good, but that's, we just don't. <laughs> maybe someday now that I've thought of it, maybe we'll try it, I don't know, we just don't. So anyways, yes, we like it with some cheese. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.